going on, everyone? Mystic for Mystical Tomes here. And today, today, we are going to watch Diablo 4 official cinematic release trailer. And I'm a big fan of Diablo. I'm not an obsessed fan, but I really like Diablo 2. I really like Diablo 3. The gameplay of what I've seen online so far looks really, really good. I have not seen this trailer yet. I've heard great things. I've seen it thumbnails all over my freaking page on YouTube. But we're going to be the ones reacting to this. And if you enjoy my reactions, you enjoy my commentary on this, if you enjoy it with me, please leave a comment, like a thumbs up, or say, hey, I think they should, they could do better on this with this, or hey, I think it's flawless the way it is. That's just what we do here. We give honest feedback in the comment sections, and I want to hear from you guys what you think they could do better, or what they should just keep in, you know, whatever. But if you enjoy my commentary, my honest feedback, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And also, if you're feeling so generous, please consider becoming a member of my uh, community of Mystical Tomes, where we have uh, more exclusive content, uh, stickers, gifts, all that other stuff. So without further ado, let's continue. The one thing I will say about that, if this is some kind of religious thing going on here, that woman is, if that is a woman, I'm assuming, but if that woman is extremely disciplined to ignore the pain of walking on just magma or just whatever she's walking on, that looks extremely painful. And all I have to say so far, it's looking good. I'm getting chills right now. All right, I'm just going to say it, and if anyone agrees with me, let me know. I'm trying really hard not to cough right now. I do apologize for that, but let me know. So I think that if Blizzard can't keep their sales marketing with just games alone, I think they should just make movies. I don't know what you guys think, but that's what my honest opinion is. The cinematography is flawless. You can see everything that's built up in the freaking thing. You have pillars of fire, magma coming down. You have smoke. You have soot. You have ash. You have freaking lines of freaking uh, molten rock going throughout the whole entire floor and chasm of this place. And they have all that cinematography, all the freaking shades of the reds, the whites, the blacks. Um... Everything just adding to the ambiance of this whole entire situation. Then you have that legion of knights or whatever they are. Humans, Nephilim, whatever. And it looks absolutely amazing. Those guys look like literally just brick houses just with those shoulders as wide as they are. They look absolutely intimidating. But hopefully they actually do uh, a decent number against these demons. I don't know what's going to happen, like I said. Oh, is this one of the freaking angels? Who's this? That's a much wider wingspan than a lot of the other ang angels of the... Who's that? That's not Tyrael. That's pretty sick. He just waves his hand and a great deal of pain goes on him. May we fight true in his holy name. Like I said, cinematography, man. Okay, that was a sick move, man. That was a very, very sick move. 30 foot long spears, yeah, that'll do it. And they're like in a phalanx. Yeah, that's sick.
Oh, what's he looking at now? Ooh, dude, that voice alone just gave me goosebumps. Oh my god. I, I'm I'm assuming, and this is just me loosely speculating on here, because that's not the same armor as Tyrael, and Tyrael doesn't have a spear from what it looks like, because his sword, a sword handle is a sword handle with a pommel handle and a cross guard. This one, it just looks like a shaft of a spear or something. So I could be wrong. Uh, it could be a Narius. Um, I don't know yet, but we can look that up later for any spoilers if you guys want to know that. And there will probably be spoilers, so if you don't want to see the spoilers, just skip the part of the whole entire video. Which will be probably like the 5 o'clock, not 5 o'clock, but 5 minute marker, give or take. But yeah, I love this right here. He's just sitting there, damages a whole bunch, or scares a whole bunch of demons with a freaking grace that he shot out at them. And now he's going after Lilith, and if you guys don't know who Lilith is, she is uh, the daughter of Hatred. Or daughter of hatred, and she is the daughter of I think Mephisto. Let me know in the comment sections down below if I'm right about that. The daughter of Mephisto. I'm pretty sure she is. I'm pretty sure she is. Like I said, it's been a minute since I knew anything about the the Diablo lore here. But let me know in the comment section down below. I will say this, if that is Anarius, he basically brings the MVP of all entrances. He has so much light, he has so much power, that the energy coming off of him is creating cracks in the floor before he even touches them. His mere presence is literally causing pain to these demons. And that's just, it's a badass entrance. It is literally just a badass entrance. And so with that being said, MVP to Anarius, if that is Anarius, because it it looks completely different from Diablo 3, but they could have done a design change on it. Oh, there's Lilith, yep. To the face! I have returned to hell for you. Ooh. I'm telling you, that man's voice gave me goosebumps the entire time. Both times he spoke. Just chills. But... We're going to have spoilers here in just a moment. If you guys want to skip it, go right ahead. I'll let you know in the time mark where you can skip that. And I'll also give you my review at the end of this. So, without further ado, let's get into the spoilers. Alright, so I'm on the Diablo fan page. And what I found on here, or Diablo Wiki, whatever you want to call it. Uh, after the destruction of the Black Soul Stone, the defeat of the Primeval, the fall of Malth uh, Malthiel, Angel of Death, countless lives have been lost. And the denizens of Sanctuary find themselves struggling... Through the darkest of ages, years have passed as some semblance of regular life starts rebuilding a threat as old as the land itself begins to stir. Now, with that being said, here's another paragraph. This is from Diablo fan page. This is not my freaking information, so I want everyone to know it came from this source right here. So, that's what it is. It takes several decades after Diablo 3. Millions have been slaughtered by the actions of the high heavens, the burning hells alike, and the power vacuum, a legendary name resurfaces. Lilith, the daughter of Mephisto, so I was right on that, whispers a progenitor of humanity. Her grip on sanctuary cuts deep into the hearts of men and women alike, cultivating the worst of in its denizens and leaving the world in a dark, hopeless place. So, with that also being said, the main plot is similar to Diablo 2. In that is the following the footsteps of the story. Specifically, the game player characters is or are pursuing Lilith across pursuing Lilith across Sanctuary. Core theme of the game is hatred, the motif of hatred consuming the world and the heart of the players player characters. So I'm not going to tell them any. I'm not going to tell you anything else. That's the main plot. So that's the spoilers. If you want to read the rest of this, it's on Diablo.Fandom.com. Go check them out. It gives you a very long and detailed freaking intro to that. And then for my review, I gotta say 10 out of 10. It had everything. It had the cinematography. It had the the ambiance, the atmosphere, the buildup. And then we have Anarius, which we barely had any kind of connectivity of Diablo 3 because you just found, you know, the the writings of Anarius in his, you know, 10 pages that we find of him or whatever. But um, Anarius looks like a complete, uh, 
he looks like a complete awesome character. He's there for vengeance, and he's there with a burning hatred for Lilith. Clearly, you could see that in the trailer. So, if you enjoyed my reaction, the spoilers, finding out what the main plot is of this, if you like my commentary and my review of this, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And also, if you feel as generous as you much as possible, uh, you know, you guys are always welcome to subscribe. It doesn't cost a thing. And if you want to feel even more generous, please consider becoming a member of my channel where you have more exclusive content. And it also helps me out so independent YouTubers like myself, we can actually make a living off of this. This is what I've been wanting to do for like the last three years. So if you do feel so inclined to do that, let me know. If not, it's not a problem. But thank you for your time. I'll see you guys in the next video. Mystical for Mystical Tomes out. Take care.